today we are going to be looking at another topic which is a conducive corporate culture for a breakthrough believer. And I promise you, I won't be long. Can you beam on the screen for us our mission, our vision and the mission as well as our core values? We are not going to read through, but I want us to look at them. For you who have not yet um, if you haven't crafted in your heart, I want you to memorize everything that is written there. Keep it at the back of your mind. Because we are going to look, we are going to use our vision, the mission, and our core values as a template on which we are going to be looking at as we move. We are going to base our teaching on the book of Hebrews chapter number 10. Verse number 24 and 25. Verse 24 and 25. If you may read for us. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Bless the way. Father God, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we lay ourselves before you, praying, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that you may do that which you desire. We pray that we have come to a place which is Jesus. We pray that you may speak. And we pray that you may cause us to bow. You say in your word, oh, you are heavy laden. Come to me and I shall give you rest. We pray that you may cause even all these things that have burdened us to bow. We pray in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. I said we are going to be looking at the, the topic, conducive corporate culture for a breakthrough believer. Because of the these two terms from our topic, which I think will help us will help us a big deal which is a culture and conducive or rather conduit according to the dictionary uh, um, uh, definition the definition of the term culture it speaks of the ideas the customs and social behaviors of peop of a particular people or society. So when we speak of a culture, we speak of behaviors and customs, even ideas that, that people live or abide by. And the term conjured, it just simply means a channel through which everything needs to be relayed. I want us to look at um, into this term culture. Most of people, uh, business people in the room will understand what I'm talking about. Because for one to have an effective team or an organization that is effective, you need three elements, which is your vision. You need to have a vision. Is it so? Uh, business people, please help me. <laughs> Though the vision may come through one person, but 
according to the book of Habakkuk chapter number 2, verse number 2, it says the vision should be written down so that he who reads the vision will run with something that he is aware of and he knows and understands. So, in order for one to have a very effective team, you need to have a culture but the culture is informed by these three elements which is your vision your mission and your value your core values I know when you go to companies and everywhere where, where there is a vision posted somewhere you you it's in this sequence. It will be your vision, your mission, and your values. But I want to show you something here. That it is not the vision that gives birth to the results. But it is the values what you value that gives birth to the vision. Is it, is it, do you understand what I'm saying? So, when you value something, then that, that which you, are, you value will give birth to a vision. Vision speaks to what you desire to see or what you desire to achieve from the point of the values what I value much okay let us look at this let, let us go to the book of 1 Timothy chapter number 2 verse number 3 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 in the New King James Version for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay, stop there. We, I said, Gite. the vision and the mission are given back to buy your, what you value. God desires, God had a vision, or God has a vision that all men should be saved. So, the vision speaks to the desire. What you desire, what you want to see as an outcome. So, God values men by God values men and relationship with men, then he desires therefore now that all men should be saved. So this is the vision of God. God has this vision that all men should be saved. Where this vision is coming from? This vision is coming from the value that he has about men. I don't know. I don't know if Gishoga is in my woman. So, so they take me, no, but it's fine. Let's, let's continue. Sure <laughs> so, vision. Umbon. Speak to a desire. In the case of a church setting, a vision Umbon. speaks to where do we want to be in the future? Okay. Let's go back to our vision and mission. We desire to reach as many people for Christ as possible. And we desire to help them become spiritually matured as possible without compromising the word of God. And our mission. So our vision speaks to our desire. What we want to achieve we desire that all men should be saved. So, our vision, therefore, will speak to our mission. Our mission must be 
will go in this, in this phrase. What is it that we are going to do in order to fulfill that vision? Because the key thing here is for the vision to be fulfilled. I said, in order for one to have an effective life, you need to have a culture. For you to have a culture, you need to have these three elements in, in place, which is your vision, your mission, and your values. And I said your values will give birth to your vision. Amen. Let's go to John chapter number 3, verse number 16. John John chapter 3 verse 16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life okay. from, from, from the verses that you, we've just read do you, do you, are you aware that what God values maybe it's me maybe it's me but I, I believe that God values life more than anything. Hence men, after, after the fall of men, God devised ways to bring men back to life. So God values life. So for God, being, for God to value life, okay, God, God valuing life from the position of valuing, valuing life. Therefore, he had a desire to save men. Then from the desire, there was a mission because a vision without the mission, it, it, it is as though as nothing. Because you can have a vision. But if you don't have a mission, because your mission speaks to how are you going to achieve the vision, therefore. So John 3, 16 says, for God is so loved. God valued men. Then he desired, according to the first book of Timothy, that all men should be saved. Coming back to the mission now, God gave his son. Our vision is to carry out, our vision is, we desire to reach as many people for Christ as possible. But how are we going to carry out our vision? By exercising the mission, which is to carry out the Great Commission. So carrying out the Great Commission is a step to fulfilling the vision. What are we talking about here? We are talking about a conducive corporate culture for a breakthrough belief. But I want us to understand this thing first. As we move, that for you to have an effective organization or team or a church, you need to have a culture. And you can never have a culture if you don't have a vision. Is it clear, Basara? So you need a culture. We, are we, were look, we looked at the prevailing mindset of a believer. But it does not help you to receive a prevailing mind if you don't have a culture that is going to channel that mind into a right place. You can be moved to another po to, a, to, a, to, a, to a higher position. But if you are not capacitated, if you are not well prepared, if you are not well equipped, because your vision and your mission will speak to your understanding in terms of how are you going to fulfill how are you going to have that which you desire amen so God for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so the giving part is the mission of God trying to save Voga what he values, which is man. So God values man. So the value that God has about man pushed God to have a vision of saving men. But God having that vision of saving men, it, it did not end there. But he had to now have a, a mission which the mission speaks to how is he going to achieve 
that vision. Uh, listen to this. For us to be in heaven again it depends on the value that God has about your life. How much God values your life. Can, that can be determined by his mission. Because if his mission was to give Christ Jesus to die, that's got to show you how much God values you. So with these three elements, your vision, your mission, and your core values. You can create a culture. No, or rather, I say, a culture is created, Vogue. Wake up. A culture work as a conduit. What is a conduit? A conduit, it's a channel through which whatever that needs to be relayed is relayed to, through. So, a culture will work as a conduit for your vision to come to pass. So, your culture is given back to by these three elements, your vision, your mission, and your, and your core values. Our, 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 our vision. We desire to reach as many people for Christ as possible. And we desire to help them become as spiritually mature as possible. That is our vision. And then we have a mission to carry out the great commission. And then we have core values. The threshing floor is a place of, is the sanctuary of God's presence. It is a place where the Lord receives unadulterated worship. It is a place where people have an encounter with the person of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Okay? So, as we have this vision and mission and core values, these things therefore speak to a culture now. Our culture. What is our culture? As the threshing floor. I know. Many of us, if not all of us, we do not know what is our culture. Because we can have a breakthrough, a prevailing mind. But without the culture, that breakthrough, that, that, that mindset, it's useless. Because a culture will be a conduit for that mind, for that prevailing mindset. Yes, so our culture from our vision, I said, a vision can be given to one man. And that this man now needs to write this vision down and give to those who shall read it and run with it. As we are gathered here, we are gathered not to a man, not to support a man, but to support a vision that God gave to a man. So, for us to, in order for us to fulfill this vision, we need to have a culture now. What is our culture? Because our culture speaks to the ideas, the customs. <laughs> What our customs? What is it that we we do in order for us to how, how which he in a sense are you? What are we doing? A sense with this cause fulfill a mission, a vision, a mission that enable us to be able to fulfill our vision and our mission. Okay, let me tell you our culture. Our culture. Prayer. Fasting and the word. So, if we have a prevailing mind, we have been moved from the level of the flesh, 
to the level of the spirit. If we do not have a culture, because a culture it's a, works as a conduit that will bring this vision to fruition. So, prayer, fasting, and the weight of God. That is our culture. That is what we do. We can never fulfill this vision without these three elements. Let me add two more. This Sunday gathering, home sales, that, that is our culture. That is who we are. That is how we are. Uh, um, culture incubates. Yeah. Culture incubates the vision. Let us use this example of, 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 of a garden. Let us, let us just say you want to have a garden. Then you start to prepare and you, you, you cultivate the land and then you, you plant some things there. That vision was brought about what you valued before. What was your value? And then, after having the vision, was a when the mission, what about the mission? And then you had a mission. Because when you when you have a vision, a vision it's it's not something that you are going to do. A vision a vision is something that is already complete but has not yet been started. For it to be fulfilled in the so if you have a garden. You want your garden what do you to do? be fruitful when it's in the garden. You take a horse pipe and then you water it. As you water your garden, you're doing this for, for your plants to grow. But if you only water it once and then you water it once, you'll only water it once and then you'll water it once. Will your vision be fulfilled? So then, after usuna ingati, usuna wamans, usuna i host pipe, and the host pipe and the garden. Leon dogo, let's do so na zong. Sekwa na gizinza lega magic culture. Now all those things have to give birth to the culture. Mwabi kachi zoti ni manch. Because what is the culture going to say? The culture will speak to the behavior, the lifestyle. Okay, let me let me make this example. You want to. To have a life that is spirit filled. You want to always be in line with the will of God. What do you do? You ask pastors to pray for you. Eh? No, that's uh -huh. not the way. But what you do? You have a vision that you want to get there. And then you have a mission. And the mission will, will say, I need to pray. I need, I need to pray and fast. After prayer and fasting, therefore now, your culture, then a culture is created. What is your culture? Give one five or five excelling tenders every day. That is your culture now. So we culture and praying that has become your culture. Now you are praying that you want to have a vision that will give birth to your lifestyle. You want to have a vision that will give birth to your lifestyle. What are you speaking with your mouth? So your vision, your mission, and your core values will give birth to your culture. Without a culture, a mission, a vision is useless. We cannot reach our destination without us having a culture that is conducive. So we need to have a culture. We are looking at the conducive corporate culture for a breakthrough believer. 
No matter what the church says, no matter what the church wants to do, the way people behave and think and believe determines what's going to happen. Whatever the church wants to do, but if the people have decided what, they they want to do, what the okay. will of the people what I'm saying will is, prevail. No matter how the prevailing mindset, we may have a prevailing mindset, but among the low prevailing mindset, but if our prevailing mindset does not have a culture, they do not yield fruits because that mindset should be must be cultured. A culture speaks of ideas, customs, lifestyle, and behaviors. So without a culture. That breakthrough, breakthrough mindset is nothing. The culture in the church will be, determine, will, will be determining factor no matter how brilliant the strategies and the ideas are. The if the church wants to do something but if the mindset of people wants to do another thing let me repeat this you may have many ideas or you, you may have strength God if your ideas and your strength and your power and your abilities are not cultured you are like a person who has nothing the two must work in sync. The culture and the mindset. The strategy the prevailing mindset must flow through a culture. Do we understand? This prevailing, this prevailing mindset must be cultured because the mind must the ideas the strategies must flow through the culture the breakthrough mindset the prevailing mindset of a believer must be guided by the culture because it does not help you or anyone to have a vision to know things but if you are not going to use a culture as a conduit for those things to come to pass your strategies are as good as dead let us look at the book of Acts chapter number 24 verse number 27 I know what is about the conducive corporate culture of a, for a breakthrough believer I thought it would make sense if I start this way just for you to understand what the culture is because we have many people who go with this mindset that they are called. God will be so but they calling mm. is just hanging in the air. It's not shepherded. So once you have a calling upon your life, a gifting, there's a lot that you need to do in order for that vision or that calling to work. Let us read chapter number 18, verse number 24. 27. Acts 18 verse 24. Acts chapter 18 verse 24. Now a certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandra, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he knew only the baptism of John. Wait, wait. The word of God tells us that this man, Apollos, 
He spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord. Verse number 26. So he began to speak boldly in the synagogue when Aquila and Wait, 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 wait. Stand like that. So he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. He was well instructed with the things of the Lord. And he went to the synagogue and speak boldly. But when Aquila and Priscilla had him, they took him aside and explain to him the way of God more accurately. I think this will make sense now. That it doesn't matter how much anointing you have. But if your anointing is not cultured, okay, there are people who are called, who are used by God mightily. Okay, no, let, uh, maybe let me just not say they are used by God. There are people who know that they are called. But but they will never reach the place where God wants them to be. Why? Because they walk by this knowledge that they are called. And they don't put things to place in order for them to, to, to fulfill their mission and their vision or their calling. A culture is going will work as a conjute to bring your calling to fruition. So without the culture, your vision and your calling and your gifting, it does not matter. It's in vain. This man spoke boldly when Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. You may be called. You may have many ideas. But if you do not have a conjure, that will bring those ideas to fruition. You are like a person that does not have anything. Is it clear? Okay. There are components to create an apostolic church. <laughs> there are components that create the apostolic church. What is an apostolic church? An apostolic church is a breakthrough church. Oh, For Paul to become who he is today, what is what it called for Barnabas to teach him the way to use his calling. Paul, it is Paul, the word of God says when Paul was in Jerusalem they, 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 the, the saints were not in one accord until Paul he was sent to Tarsus then Barnabas when Barnabas was sent to Antioch, after, after, after because of the persecution, after the brethren was in Antioch, after the brethren were sent to Antioch, after the brethren were sent to Antioch, after the brethren were sent to Antioch, to Antioch, to Antioch, after the brethren to Antioch, to to Antioch, to to Antioch, to 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 but he is showing him the way to use his calling. So, we are talking about now the conducive corporate culture for a breakthrough believer. Because a breakthrough believer needs to be cultured. And the culture works as a conjunct for that breakthrough believer. Hence, 
We have these components now that create the apostolic culture. These components regulate lifestyles. These components regulate lifestyles, beliefs, and behavior systems of the apostolic church. These components were the, were the culture of the apostolic church. What were those components? What are those components? Let's go to the book of Acts chapter number 2. Verse number 42 and 46. Verse 42 and 46. Acts chapter 2 verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all as anyone had need. Okay, thank you. Ibanza, the church being born. After being born, having the apostles, there had to be now a, a set way of doing things in order for those people to grow in the Lord. Verse number 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. So what, the, what made these people to grow because what are the apostles doing? They are carrying on, they are carrying out now the mission. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. So the disciples are made now. But now, these disciples need to be cultured. For them to be what the Lord wants them to be. So, for them to continue steadfast in the dog, apostles' doctrine was part of the culture. So, without them sitting under the, these doctrines, they could not reach anywhere. Because these saints, okay. the word of God says, they, and they continued steadfastly. They, they, they prevailed. No, no, no. Or they persevered. No. Yes, yes. They persevered. In the doctrine of apostles. That means that the, the doctrine of apostles is inconvenience their old life. But the, the, the word of apostles became which was conducive for them to become breakthrough believers. So, without them sitting under these teachings, they could not be the people that okay, God wanted to be. A steadfast or, or, or to be or to persevere. What happens here? It, 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 it's an inconvenience to me. Go to a, but because I have a vision for me to reach a certain destination to persevere to what happens here what's happening here the culture but it makes what you have to prevail and what you have to prevail I, I, I confirm it does not confirm your calling but it makes your calling to succeed. So, if the culture of the threshing floor is we study the word we pray and we fast. It's not easy to fast but we, we, we persevere. 
You think it's easy to come to church? It's not easy to come to church. It's not easy to go to home. Why you are you are begged every day to go to home? Why is it not easy for you? It's because of Satan. Once you grasp the culture, that Uma is the one who impels you. 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 Culture must be inside of you. So that what Jeremiah said, you may also be able to speak. Even though I do not want to speak it anymore. But it is now like fire. It is like fire in my bones. So culture culture it makes what is inside of you your vision what you want to see happening to carry that through so there are components within the culture that are set in place for one to prevail so they continued. Then oh, they continued. But oh, them to, to, to persevere. So, no, 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 no. Back to back. For them to continue. It means there was a challenge. There was an obstacle before them. But it called for them to steadfastly sit under the teachings. Because these teachings were not just ordinary teachings, but these were teachings that moved people from the norms of the day to the place of the spirit. So they continue steadfastly but in, the cell, in, the, in, in the apostles' teachings. <laughs> I was so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Okay, thank you. Verse number 46. So, continuing daily with one another, in with one accord in, in the temple. I want us temple. to break this verse into two. The first part says, so, continue daily with one another in the temple. Now, it speaks of continually devoting ourselves to one another. Um, fellowshipping with another. Or continuing with another. Yes, yes, yes. Continually fellowshipping. Fellowshipping with one another. If you can adopt that um, until it becomes your culture. You know that this thing of gossiping will end. If if sing at if we all decide that we will all fellowship together, whatever obstacle may come, this issue of gossiping will come to an end. You know the reason why they could not gossip? <laughs> it is because they were always together. Okay, okay, okay. These people were always together. They were always in one accord. No, so there was no space and, and an opportunity for, for one to gossip about the other. So, they are gathering together at all times. Became a culture to them. The issue of gossip was not even mentioned in their midst. It's something that they didn't even cross their minds. Because they were always together. You know what causes us to gossip? It's because we have groups and we, we are segmented we have segmented ourselves into groups. Therefore, it's easy for us to gossip. But if we can decide today to create a culture, even if we are not together 
physically, but spiritually. It may happen okay, that it happens that people journey. be together in the spirit. Paul says, Though I may not be in your midst, but I have already judged that person. Because he does not need to be there in, in But the spiritually, he is there with them. So, if we may be together in, in fellowship in the spirit, <laughs> my challenge here is now. Our challenge is then. As we do not want to fellowship in the spirit. We only want to fellowship here on Sundays and then pretend. But once we are as one, in fellowship and together in the spirit, there will be no space and opportunity for gossip. And breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. I'm not, I'm not going to uh, uh, expound on that one. Continually devoting to prayer. Continually devoting themselves to prayer. You know that prayer we are Prayer is not a vision. But prayer is a culture. That if one prays results are guaranteed. And prayer was important to this church in such a way that there was nothing that was done outside of prayer, beside prayer. Even when they had to replace Judas, they prayed. Because it was in their genes, it became their culture to pray. When Peter was arrested according to the book of Acts chapter number 12. The word of God says, Peter was in prison. Verse number 5. Verse number five. Peter was therefore kept in prison. But constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. So when the church makes church to be, makes Prayer to be the culture. It makes no more yet Even one of us may be in trouble. There are things that happen automatically because they are already inside of you. You will not be begged if we need to pray. Because in prayer, because these people. Prayer, when they're praying to God, they had this in mind. <laughs> we want Peter to be freed HL. from the jail. Praying to God. They did not tell him that we're going to pray for you. Because it was in their it was their culture to pray. They they to Imagine Peter came to prison and he took off his shoes and he took off his cloak and he slept. Oh, Bazalwan. In prayer. Prayer. Because because taking off your shoes, that means the journey has come to an end. That means Peter has already given given up of, for him okay, to come out of right. jail. Right. Moses is seeing a burning bush. He's seeing a burning bush. God Moses. Moses, take off your sandals. Because the place that you is holy now, he takes off his sandals. He, he, he does not say because you're going to dirty this place. 
He's, he's said, you cannot go the old way in a new place. So, he's taking off his sins. That means my walk is not the way to the end. Now I'm beginning a so, new walk. So, when Peter entered prison, taking off his shoes, yes, the Bible does not say this. But he's taking off his shoes. He was saying. It is over. Because the word of God says, it says, Herod, no, 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 no. the king of that time, he killed James. No, Peter. And Peter, he wants, he wants, he wants, he wants, I think maybe he heard, he knew, he, he, he knew that James so, was in prison, therefore if he is imprisoned, verse yes, I'm going to die tomorrow, let me just take off my shoes, let me sleep, but, he said, the church, after Peter having given up in jail, the church prayed. Peter had already The church this side is praying. God sent an angel. This was their culture. For you to see, local who see on pillow one. In a paratic bona, one of those much elegant. It was you their culture. Who won't have a bona 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 it was not wrong for them not to recognize him. Because this teaches us that even after you prayed for something and it is fulfilled, it does not stop you from praying, from calling you praying. So, Peter is in prison. The church this side is praying. If you get lost, keep. The, the angel comes and frees him. He comes and knocks. Rhoda comes, she peeps I'm out. She sees him. Goes back inside. And says, I've seen, they say, no, you've seen his angel. They're continuing with what they know of prayer. Because prayer became their culture. You know when something becomes your culture, no means it was not in a was of shit of your own. Because it becomes you. Cannot change you over You become one, you become intertwined with that which you decided to, to put your life into. So prayer um, what became their culture. Waba they pray in such a way that nobody could stop them from praying. Remember in the book of Acts chapter number 12, chapter number 4, they prayed until the place that they were in shook. I'm about to finish. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. I'd like for us to speak of this. Just dwell on this. Going back to our foundational scripture. Hebrews 10, 24. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. That's number 25. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. As is the manner of some. But exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Let me explain this. Let me Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. As is the manner of some. No, as is the manner of some. Please focus on me. As is 
the manner of some. It does not say that let us stop fellowshipping as other as other others are fellowshipping. It, 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 it says that let us continue fellowshipping because some when they came across problems they stopped to come and fellowship. Yes, one thing you show. Do we understand? Okay. Liti, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. As is the manner of some. As is the manner of some. Because they, they knew that some of the they 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 But exhorting one another. That means others when they come across they stop to come and but they not stop to come and to exhort one another. Yes, one another. Does it make sense? Not that let us stop coming to fellowship because they come and 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 fellowship when they come across problems they stop fellowship The church in the book of Acts had large and small meetings gathering in homes for today's session. I want us to look into this um, topic or these components devoting ourselves to celebration and sales. Celebrations Ukupa. and cells. Okay. No, I, 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 I yes, yes. Makai. Makai. Yes. The church in the book of Acts had small and large gatherings in homes. And the apostles preached the gospel in, in those places where believers frequented. In the synagogues, the apostles you used to preach in the synagogues, preaching to the Jews, and in the marketplaces, preaching to the Gentiles. And these gatherings that these people held were not free for all gatherings. No, 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 no. It wasn't free for all. It was not free for all. Not to I would No one could do as they please. Yes. It was not free for, free for all gatherings. No one could do as they please. But it was guided by seasoned, mature believers to show the right way of doing things. So, if the church used together, there was someone that they used to meet and then there was someone who was who was matured in the spirit. For him to teach in the manner in which things must be done. This did not mean that they were controlling the brethren. That this means that there are certain in the church of God, things must be done in a certain way. Let me remind you this. We are talking about the conducive corporate culture for a breakthrough believer. And we, and in this little topic, about creating a culture. The culture, the prayer was the culture. The became a culture. Breaking bread together became the to a culture. point that you could not see that someone was going to eat their because they sold their possessions. Oh, yes, yeah, 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 culture. Le. Do, do you understand? The culture culture. They, they sold their possessions. You see how difficult this culture is. 
Oh, command the Bayou Shumayel, the Jabaham boys, by the Lupu Labimoka, Baban and the Abutus Baban Rosin of Marathi. And then they go home. Go to Liba and the Lady. But this church here. La Ligate. Nalivis El Suni Zoga Kulem Yang. This verse has been taken out of context. Eliti, Eliti, it's an animal in your own apostle. Bring money into the feet of the apostles. And let out under them young. People love to say, to quote that, that verse. Um, I, I came across that problem as well. I was speaking to the saints. I spoke, I spoke. And then after I finished, <laughs> he was took out money. And then he placed it on my feet. I said, no. I said to him, if you want to give me money, just give me money. Don't place it. Because you placing it here is going to create an expectation. Maybe he was thinking, maybe he thought of me as an apostle. I don't know. When he placed the money, I was like, no. And then I took him to scripture. No. They are placing money in the feet of the apostles. It was not, not something was that was preached. No. They did not preach and then they the money. They were gathered together. We see the best and then they brought the money the Bible does explain that the apostles distribute giving the money to the poor now this is the apostle the apostles feet I know it's going to come out of YouTube I'm okay I'm with it. I'm saying this. People are Give taking this. an advantage of out there because we of this. We have we the truth. We have the truth. People have the truth. People have taken advantage of with no. this verse that they should bring money. Apostle, they, they, people do not bring money to the apostles' feet. They do have apostle, so that the apostles may be enriched. No. no. I'm not against someone who is rich, but I'm saying the, the mindset of them bringing the money to the apostles' They brought it because they were doing this culture of the So that they will be known who's poor among them. Now they are poor. 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 They are so we must not rob people using the scripture. No, that is wrong. I'm going to through there. I was just passing through. Uh, let us read Acts chapter number 14, verse number 1. Acts chapter 14, verse 1. Now it happened in Iconium that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews, and so that a great multitude, both of Jews and of Greeks, believed. Okay, thank you. Go to First Corinthians chapter number fourteen, verse number twenty-seven to thirty-three. First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse twenty-seven. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two, or at most three, each in turn. And let one interpret. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. But if anything is revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silent. For you can all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be encouraged. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. This verse is saying this to you, prophet, that if you are a prophet, it does not mean you do as you please. I'm speaking that this verse it shows you that a prophet does not do as they please. This is another verse that people okay. do not understand. There's this is 
that it is written down but they speak what was preached to them and leave what is written down I know the spirit of prophets are subject to prophets no, it does not say that. It says, the spirit of a prophet are subject to the prophet. That means a prophet, when they hear something, they are able to control. You are able to keep the prophet inside of you so, not to cause chaos. The first church, when they gathered together, it was not free for all. As I said, no one could do it in But someone was, was, was taught in the manner in which they should be trained. Trying to do away with the chaos. There is chaos that is happening. You see that this one is called, but they are trained. Yes, they are called, but they are crazy. Because, Lalele, I got it. Moba. God is not a God of order. He is a God of order. So, he needs order in his house. As much as we choose one to bring direction. So, the spirit of a prophet are subject to the prophets. So you are able when you hear something, you are able to control yourself. Yeah, I promise you, you will not topple over because you will be able to be controlled. Because the spirit of the prophet was subject to the prophet. I was just passing through there. This thing of being crazy. Someone is here and they want to do this thing and there is no order in the house of the Lord. But in this church, it's not a place of order. A culture for them to and fellowship. And after having fellowship together, and then someone who in the midst of not in any, but in they walk in the world, because the word of God says, 2 Timothy 4.12, do not let anyone despise you because of your youth but be an example through the way your conduct and your character so Umundo wa ibe kutoa agubo yenu soleti direction ni nika idiensa. Umundo kuli lenga leo ndela. To give direction in the church was matured in that manner. So these people when they gathered together, it was not free for all. Babengens umatanda. Kona ngangu mbona ni lenga? Washa wa gemba me pulpit. I saw someone who was slept at the pulpit. Serious. Very serious. Like a get hold of more, is he? 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 Is Okay, As I'm preaching and then you see me standing on top of the pulpit. Babus be as a game pamala. Babus bear comes and serves me. Imagine that. But then a verse is in the scripture that says the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. But I do not believe there's a spirit of the prophets tell you to stand on top of the pulpits. I don't believe. Okay. So, as we are going to verse number 27. If anyone speaks in, in a tongue, let there be two or at the most three each in ten and let one interpret there is no order that surpasses this 
ukuthi bekhona ukukhuluma ngezilimi nje If anyone speaks in Aba bababini noma bathi angesha ukuthi bazala ngiye kala ukukhuluma ngelimi I'm not stopping you from speaking La kwakhulunywa ngokukhuluma ngelimi lokho obona ukuthi ka kunomiyalezo othile This spoke when there was a message there was something that should be passed to the church I'm not saying we should stop ukukhuluma ngelimi Ngisho ukuthi kwala ukukhuluma ngelimi ozithe ka kunomiyalezo lokho But in this case the Kwakuthi ke aba bababini because they had to be two or three Speaking in tongues plus interpretations is the culture prophecy So uma ngabe ngekho umuntu ozo prophet angeze sizwayo kukho nokukhuluma ngelimi efuna prophet angelimi akube khona ngozo interpret noma loyo okhuluma akakuthandazela ukuinterpret the one who speaking in tongues Ukuze kube khona i order and so that there may be order in the house of the Lord So the purpose was to control was not to control but for accuracy for the apostolic pattern the desire for congregational for congregation participation must not override the apostolic patterns the church must function accurate aligning aligning itself with the head of the body so as well as when we are here We know that Christ is in this house. You will not see him with your naked eye when you look around. You will not see him with your naked eye when you look around. You will not see him with your naked eye when you look around. But Christ is in this house and then he placed someone. In our case, we will not see him with your naked eye. So, we will not see him with your naked eye. indlela yakho yokukhonza nesipho sakho your gifting and the, your conduct in must the not of override the pattern akumele ikudlule indlela yokwenza yalendlu of this house because lendlu ne pattern yayo because this house has its own in indlela yakho which is apostolic we have yokwenza izinto esengokupostoli of doing so awazi kusuka nje wenza umathanda you can't do therefore as you please yonke lefa ikenzeke in alignment with the head because there's a head everything must be done which is Christ and Christ was a given daughter at Chile Christ who would be on as a little bit as a commission to lay on to lay instruction to the house there's a lot of money amen thank you look so mad I am done preaching now that is full of efficiency one Verse number 22 to 23. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So, no part of the body should override the system of the whole body. And he put all things under his feet. And gave him to be head over all things to the church. Which is his body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. So, when we are gathered here, we should know that we have faith. which is Christ and then we are so, part of his body. Uh, uh, There is no member of the body uh, that can tell the head what it should be. Uh, If you see the hand move, uh, it is because the, the head uh, is the other the way head. around. It does not have uh, the uh, other uh, way uh, around. Uh, that the head uh, instructs uh, the head. Uh, How will that be? Uh, If the hand instructs the head, what to do, that no, you should think. Because you don't think. It's the head that instructs the hand. So the hand will can never instruct the head. It can never happen like that. So jalo im amalungo mzima. The members of the body. They cannot. Oguta operate outside the system. That is said. The correct, the correct apostolic application of its patterns divides the church into two. 
If the, the church functions well, it's going to be separated into two. How so? Because of a church celebration, a Sunday service celebration, which is We will have a Sunday service celebration of which we are gathered here today. And then we have home cells in Kondo Zasemakai. So, that is where the church functions properly. Because at first we spoke of the church having As gatherings. In the, at, at, at the homes of the brethren. They had home cells. So, according to the apostolic pattern, if the, the church functions, surely it is going, the church is going to be divided into two. There will be a Sunday celebration and home sales. The purpose of the Sunday celebration, please read for us Psalms 84, verse number 7. Psalm 84, verse 7. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. No, 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 verse number seven. Only verse number seven. seven. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. So the purpose of us gathering here, our gathering has become, or our gathering is, a conducive corporate culture. So, our gathering here today, it is our culture. And then what is the purpose of us gathering here then? Is to know God. Because when the word is preached from this point, it is preached so that we will know God. The book of Jeremiah says, if anyone wants to boast, he, must, he mustn't boast about anything else but that he knows the Father, he knows God. So, our purpose for us to gather in this place, in this fashion, in this manner, it's not for us to, to, to stomp only. It's not for us to clap hands. It's not for us to... But it's to know God. So, when you come into this place, this is the meeting place where... God meets with us and God decides and God imparts himself unto us. Remember that Moses ascended the mountain he met God and at the top of the mountain. The ascension of the mountain became a culture to Moses because it became a culture to a point that he became the friend of God. He, well, it, 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 it became a culture to a point that what, what that was Moses. if people spoke against Moses, God would intervene. Because God and Moses knew he was close. Why? It is because they spent time together. So, us fellowshipping on the Sunday. It is for us to know God. Yes, one thing that we can show us So, once a is cut. Once we spend time in this place, let us not spend time for us to go to what is Sazunkulu, but it is for and us to go to what is Sazunkulu, and what is Sazunkulu, and what is Sazunkulu, and what is and which will make us when we leave this place, when we go out there, people will not recognize us, but they will see the glory of God in us. But what is to know God? It points back to the book of Genesis. 
Adam knew his wife. Adam was Adam was He was he he and his wife. Adam knew his wife. And it, and it does not end there. It says he knew his wife and he gave birth to a son. So your communion and your meeting with God shall give birth to something. So as well as we cannot meet here and go out of this place the same. We need to know and meet. We need to meet God. When we meet God, we become one with God. And then we are going to be impregnated by the word of God or by the presence of God. And then leave this place to go out and give birth. So as well as we cannot meet in this place and then leave the same. This is Adam knew his wife and he gave birth. So if we leave this place and having not bear fruit, that means we do not know God. Okay, lie like it. There is to know God and being in the presence of God. Those two are separate. There are people who, who are in the presence of as Pastor Spear was explaining. Those they, they prophesy they were in the vicinity of the mantle. But I would be in the presence of the mantle. But I would be in the not because they used but something but wrong. Because they were said they were also. Some people who come to church they are under the power of God. But then they leave heaven not knowing God. Because knowing God means you become intertwined with God. Like, you become intertwined with God. Like, you know. Like, you know. Like, you know. Okay, but let us read. Enoch walked with God until he was no more. The preaching out there will tell you that a person who walks with God is a person who can perform miracles. So, People measure they walk with God with the things that they are able to do. No, that is not a walk with God. Because even the power of darkness can raise a person from the dead. But the word of God says, We do not hear of any But he walked anything. with God until he was no more. So when we come into this place, we come to appear before God and to know God and to meet God. So as we cannot leave this place and leave having not known God. Because that means we come with our own intentions. We come with our own intentions. Another thing that we come for is to know his people. Ephesians 4.16 Ephesians chapter 4.16 From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love Okay from whom the whole body joined and knit together. So the whole body is joined in Christ who is the head by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share cause growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. When we come into this place, we have come to know each other. For us to know each other does not mean knowing 
each other. But you won't go show what is Jungle Ba Sima Zukuru who see the Munyan Kulu. But as we know God being one with God, Siva Munya Natigo Crest, we also become one in the And this part of the body, it has got something to supply to the other. So what Pastor Damini has. When he has a church, he leaves this place after he um, pastors speak. Uh, after he has received it. Yes, it happens. It happens negatively. It happens negatively. We, are just we enter this place. A person will leave having known things that they did not know before. Because someone else told them. When the verse says, from whom the whole body is joined. If someone knows something that they did not know before, which is God's the devil puts you Because Jesus becomes now in, in the He becomes the conjunct. So law He comes with something. That he, he also has something that he does not so, have. So, when we come Us to know one another, each other, we know so, ourselves that the we must that has benefit from us. Ushangas must benefit from what that means. Also, when you no matter what you mean, like so. that mean The part of pastor in any other shangas make that mean. Oh, when you that mean, I go one to kulu mango shangas must be pumela niya. That means he cannot gossip about pastor shangas when they. Ushon jalu wa za na basala. Aye, mama kama. Ushon wuti. What that mean? No mangabe. Ene ene grace. If pastor that mean has grace, look tula. Of peace. Fanya go that mean? As ushangas when they look wuti. Ushangas pumela. The impartation sense again, your tool. Pastor Damini must now impart this peace to Pastor. Oh, man, I'm not sure any wisdom. When Pastor Shanga says, "When we are going to move on, so put my life in the center of wisdom," because we have come into contact with one another. Baba says, "There's zele ugu zote la la." Not, not only when we come into into contact physically. I go to stand and pelang go when yama. By virtue, I go to sila in the song. What I go to, we are all gathered in this place. And we are part of the same body. See, ngaya yom zimba water. Oh, man, Abu Mamlu pindo la paya. If mom Lupindo, in God's name, God has given her a grace. She should not go with it. She should not go with it. Not only having to pray for people. So, she should not go with it. 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 She should when we come together, what I am, which comes from God, I cannot live without I cannot live without I cannot live without I cannot live without Because we are one in okay. Christ. Can it happen when, 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 when someone drinks water? And then there is a part of the body that cannot benefit from the water. The, the, the water came through the body, but, but the water will be able to benefit the food. So, all the members of the, 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 the body are <laughs> the 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 that nothing can enter the mouth. Some people uh, or the, some saints are the mouthpiece. They will eat and only chew, but not swallow. What you have, what you have not swallowed, not reach to benefit the body. When they have something, they want to keep it to themselves. So, we come together to know one another, to know the people of God. There must be a, a, a transaction. Yes. Transaction. There must be a transaction that happens. That what Pastor Mayor does not have must benefit from me. I am in prison. I told something here. And I should also benefit from me. And come out of this place changed. May we stand on our feet.